We are very happy for this God called men and women who enrolled in the Bible school. It's not only for men, and, uh, but it's anyone whom the Lord has gifted, uh, either for vocational ministry or service here in our church. Consider uh, Asia Baptist Bible College if the Lord is calling you into a full-time ministry. Now, since the ministry was the, was the topic of the things that these people have been talking tonight, let's talk about ministry and let's see uh, what the Lord has to say about ministry. Shall we all stand up, please, as we turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 13, and let's read um, this. The title of my message is, What is Ministry? Uh, verse 1, I will read and read this responsibly. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the body, uh, unity of the spirit, and the band of peace. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But unto every one of us is given the grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he, now he that ascended, what is it? But he that also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you and we ask you, God, that you would help us as we study your word for us. Help us, O oh Lord, that these people who had graduated uh, in Asia Baptist Bible College, as they even they're considering um, pursuing their education, and others will be going to the fields where you had called them. I pray, O oh God, for your guidance in their lives. I pray, O oh God, that you would give them the courage uh, and also the empowerment that comes from you, and may they learn to depend on your strength and dependence and the authority of your word, so that, oh Lord, that they will never, uh, they will never fail, because you have promised that you will always be with them. And this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, you may please be seated. I have four ideas that I would like to share with you tonight, but uh, this part of Colossians is an encouragement to the church that they would walk worthy according to the calling or vocation wherewith God has called them. And he endeavored them that as believers that they would preserve the unity of uh, the unity that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the all Holy Spirit given by the Triune God that they would dis that we as a church would uh, would be demonstrating lowliness of mind, meekness, long suffering, and as we forgive one another and we do it all in love. And each one of us would endeavor to keep the unity. Now, sabi dito keep, not create. Because the unity has already been created by Jesus Christ when he died there on the cross for our sins. And when we put our faith into, um, in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he has baptized us into one body. So the unity has already been um, initiated by God himself. So as believers, we are to keep that unity. Uh, of the spirit and the band of peace. This is, this is the reason why. For there is one body, there, there is only one body in the church. They're you know, referring to the body of the church at large. There is one spirit by which you are called in the one hope of your calling. Remember this, that the Lord hates division in the church. We are not, to the Bible students who have just graduated, remember this, you are not building your own kingdoms. Many pastors are building their own kingdoms instead of extending the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We don't do that. There is no Baptist popes. 
And I hope that you will not be a Baptist Pope whenever you will be in the ministry. Okay, and then also there is one Lord, one faith. This, this faith has, has the article in it referring to the once and for all faith that is delivered to the saint. The doctrines that God has given to the church uh, in order that we may believe in, which also includes the whole counsel of God. So, one baptism referring to the Holy Spirit baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and in you all. Now, it's, um, after this, it talks about what Jesus Christ has done through his sacrificial work. By his sacrificial work, what happened? He died on the cross for our sin. He accomplished what, um, the, our work of redemption. And he was buried, and then he rose again on the third day. And the third day after that, he ascended back into heaven, and he sent the Holy Spirit to give uh, this gift to the church. And the risen Lord is giving this gift to the church through the Holy Spirit uh, as a gift by which he would be able to do the power of the ministry, to do the work of the ministry. That is our power. The Holy Spirit is the one who is enabling us. The finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ is also the one that empowers us as we serve in the Lord, as we serve him. The risen Lord, when he has ascended, he had when he has finished his redemptive work. The Bible says that in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 11, uh, verse 9, uh, it says there that, Wherefore, after his finished work of redemption, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father in him. He possesses all the authority, both in heaven and in earth. And because of this, he commands us. He commands every one of us. He commands the church. As you are going, make disciples of nations. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the world. Now the ascended Christ has gifted this the church with these gifts. And these are informed of men and women that uh, whose ministry will be the one will be the ones that God is going to use in order to build his up his church. And in verse eleven, these are the types of the ministry that God has given. Verse eleven, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Okay, these are the types of the ministry. Two of this, two of this ministry has already been fulfilled. Natapos na po ito. The work of the apostles and prophets is to finish the revelation in the New Testament. When they have written the New Testament, the office died with them. Wala na pong apostles ngayon. Hindi na nangungusap ang apostles ngayon. Ang iniwan nila sa atin ay ang kanyang holy word. The complete word of God is our authority for faith and practice. So if any person would say na I am an apostle in the present age, that person is not coming from God. Because there is no more need for the apostles because all of the things that God has needed to say to us, to inform us, are already written in the ministry. So we, minist we appreciate the ministry of these apostles as they were God's organ of revelation um, in the New Testament period. Paul has written 13 epistles. So, more, uh, almost half of the, of, the, by, of the books in the New Testament were written by Paul, and the rest uh, also were written by other of the ap apostles. So, you would remember that uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that the, that the church were being taught by the apostles' doctrine. They gathered together in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and the prayers because this the apostles doctrine is the doctrine that the apostles have been unifiedly uh, preach, preaching so that uh, they would be able to instruct the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ so tapos na yon so am um, ganun din ang prophets at that time when the revelation was not yet complete for whenever God would have something to say to the people uh, a revelation 
they would do according to what the prophets had said. And likewise, and also like the apostle, their office has already died with them. Hindi na po yan, wala nang continuation yan. But today, what do we have today? Evangelist. Now, what are evangelists? Now, our understanding of the evangelists today are people who go to one place or another and hold crusades. Now, that is a very inadequate picture of the evangelist. An evangelist is one who go to the place where the gospel has never been preached with the, with the, with the goal of establishing a congregation there so that that congregation would, become, would grow and would become self-sustaining congregation to be able to send, uh, uh, to multiply itself and reach out to the different places of the world. In other words, uh, the evangelist is our term today for missionaries. Mga missionaries po, yan po. Ang, if you are going to I interpret or to translate uh, the word evangelist into modern English, it, it would be something like this. Gaspilizer, because ev evangel is gasp, is, uh, is derived from the word gospel. So, gaspilizers. So, Pastor Boyd was an evangelist when he came over to the Philippines, and later on, he became a pastor. Okay, some people are gifted by God. The, this, the gift of the Holy Spirit are in terms of person. The apostles, the prophets, and the evangelists. What else? Pastors slash teachers. This is actually, uh, this, is, uh, this is hyphenate words that would be, what we would say are hyphenated words that if you are a pastor, you should also be a teacher. Remember that one of the qualifications of those elders, pastor, or shepherd in the church, that they are to be, what? Up to teach. May kakaya ng magturo. And I appreciate those graduates because they are up to teach. Because from the very start, they are also up to learn. If you are not willing to learn, you cannot be a pastor. If you are not teachable, you should not never enroll in the ministry. Unless you have conquered that habit of be not, or that attitude of not being teachable. By the way, it's God who calls pastors. But if people for the ministry, such as pastors and teachers. So, uh, the office of the pastors is to feed the flock. Yan ang ibig sabihin talaga ng word the pastor. And another name for a pastor is an elder as an example to the flock. And also sometimes the word in our King James Bible, it uses the word bishop to oversee the affairs of the church and the spiritual growth of the members. That is the ministry that they are looking for. For you graduates, I would like to talk to you. The work of the pastors requires you to study diligently the word of God. This is your only authority. Wala nang iba. You don't get your, your cues from the culture. Kung ano ang sikat sa culture. So if you are going to see that the new, newest movie today is a, about, hindi ko alam kung anong movies ngayon, but yung last time, The Rise of the Skywalker, believe me, there are people who are using that at the, as a study guide. Before, I have, I have read in the internet like this, uh, The Return of Superman Bible Study Guide, and they make an allusion between Superman, the last son of Krypton, and Jesus Christ. For what reason should, uh, should some people who call themselves pastors do that? Ours, <laughs> this is our only revelation. Wala nang iba. There are some pastors today who have unified or synchronized Sunday school lesson na kagaya ng mga INC na parang pasugo. And the ones practicing them are people who claim to be Baptist. We don't do that because every church needs is different. And by the way, your only authority as a herald of the word of God is coming from this word, from this book, none else. It requires you to diligently study and having the full confidence that, this wo that the word of God is going to do its work as you faithfully teach it, as you, as you, as you present it to the people depending on its power to do the transformation in the lives of the people to whom you are ministering to. So these are the men that God, whom God had called. You have the apostles, 
prophets. I would just, uh, just like to add this, because there is a person claiming to be an apostle there in Africa, in Malawi, who claims that he has, was able to discover and to produce a soap that is able to wash away our sins. <laughs> we know that that is false. It is, they, he has business in mind. So, I, I told Brother Christopher, if ever I would see you doing business, selling soaps that would wash away sins, then we will ask you to return your diploma. <laughs> okay, he promised that he will never do that. <laughs> you know that <laughs> that there are people who are claim, make that claim, and there are, sadly there are many people who get hooked with that claim, giving their money with the hope of, of washing away their sins without repentance. Okay, now, verse 12. So God has given the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the apostles, teacher, to the church as a gift by the risen Lord. For what purpose? Ito. The purpose is the equipping or maturing of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. That the saints... Now, this is the term for of God. This is a biblical term for those people who are sinners, who have put their faith and the, and, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they have put their faith in the trust and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, what happened? The Bible says that the Lord has justified God has justified them. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that happened is that they have been now separated by God unto himself. This is what you would call the positional sanctification. Positional, they are now in God. Sanctified. That is the root word for holiness. That's why they are called saints. But of course, sometimes our practice and our standing is still is a long way off. And the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of God is continually doing, changing us into the image of Christ. And you as a pastor, you are the visible agent of sanctification for the members there in your church. In the preaching and the teaching of God's word, your ministry there is to, for them, that they would be mature through your teaching and preaching ministry and the example that you show. By the way, I, I would like to emphasize that because uh, your teaching must, must match with your behavior. You cannot say one thing that would be contradicted by the way that you live. So you would do this as, um, by teaching what needs to be done and also show it. Inflesh your teaching to your example. So, what else? Once the saints had been mature, this is, also, this is not three, by the way, this is not three different work. This is just taken as one. Because once the saints have been matured, they will now be equipped for the ministry. They will now be qualified for the ministry. We need mature, sanctified members to do the work of the ministry. A ministry that would be headed by an immature pastor, Immature workers will do a great damage. So, for the maturing of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints, into the work of the ministry. So, the mature and growing saints, we will never reach the full state of our sanctification or maturity while we are here on earth. But when we are talking about our sanctification, we are not talking about perfection. What we are talking about is the direction that we are going in our life. You will fall many times. But there will be also pattern of rising up and, for, and continuing to grow and grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ as Pastor Boyd this morning have shared with us, has preached to us. What else? Once the saints have been equipped, what's going to happen? To edify, to strengthen the body of Christ. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, your goal is not to build your own kingdoms. That should not be. So that you would unite all the Baptist churches under your name. Hindi po pwede yan. 
excuse me for using this term, the ministry is not a Game of Thrones. I'm not watching that film. I'm not watching that TV series. By the way, so that's, the, that's your work. Your work is for the for maturing of the saints. Oh, now, that's going to take a lifetime, even for your own selves. To, to, for you to pursue maturity, it's going to take a lot. As, and to equip them for the ministry to edify the body of Christ. For what reason? Verse 13, let's read. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Ito po yung pinaka-goal natin, sa, lalo sa inyong mga Bible student. The unity, till we come in the unity of the faith. The word faith there has a uh, definite article, the. It means this is the, this is the faith that God has given to the church by, his, by the apostles, which contains everything that God wants us to know. These are doctrines. God wants us to understand. We must understand this. And God wants us to obey. Remember this, that doctrines are not just academic or theological knowledge. These are truths to be obeyed. Because for every doctrine, there is also a corresponding behavior that would go with it. There is a, there is a corresponding duty. Doctrine and duty must go together. Another word for doctrine is the word creeds. Creeds and conduct must go hand in hand. Hindi po pwedeng ano, magaling ka lang sa doctrine tapos hindi nakikita sa buhay mo. O kaya magaling ka, ano, magaling ka sa gawa, pero wala ka namang katotohanan o doktrin ang pinanghawakan. Those things go, go together. And, by the, and this is the thing that we must do, that as a pastor, as a teacher, some of you, Sister Hannah, will be doing your ministry as teaching in those places. Your goal is that there has to be unity of the faith, that you work together, that the whole church, to, that the whole church would be would, would be educated that in such a way that they would be confessing one faith. There would be unity in what they believe. Hindi po pwede na may mga member tayo dito sa church na naniniwala na si Kristo ay tao lamang at hindi Diyos. That's the goal. And this can only be done as, we, as you as a pastor. It is your duty to teach doctrine in your church. Now, we are living in the age of pragmatism when people say that doctrines are not important. Not so, says Apostle Paul. Okay, open your Bibles, please, to the book of uh, Titus. I know. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. And previous to that, the Bible says in verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And you, as you teach your doctrine, it is going to filter out error from your church, and it's going to create unity. When people come together, and, they, and you, you would hear you preach, and, and from the preaching of the passage, they would be able to learn the doctrines that the Bible teaches. So that there would be unity in the church. It's going to take a lifetime. But not only the doctrine. Unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. In, verse, uh, in the same verse. That there would be that we as a, that you as you are going to build your church and even as you ministry minister in this church that your your goal is that there would be unity in the knowledge of the Son of God. So, what is what kind of knowledge is he talking about here? It uses the word ginosko, which means of an intimate knowledge. Yes, maybe you know something about God theologically, but putting it into experience. Brother Erwin a while ago talked about God's, God is being sovereign. Now what, what happens when the truth meets life? Especially with the face of this coronavirus. 
or anything that is going to happen, then we have to trust that God allowed this thing to happen. He's sovereign. He knows what he's doing. So that whenever things happen in your life, for example, we, death in the family, these doctrines would serve as a comfort because you can, you can open your Bibles and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 that give us the comfort to those people who have lost their loved ones, who are believers. You can also go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 8, verse 8 that says, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. When this doctrine is now meets life, this is what happened, that your knowledge of God, the Son of God becomes more and more intimate. Not just as a head knowledge, but a knowledge that is put into life. Amen? And also, what else? Your goal also. Now, I am talking, now when I telling them, this is just for emphasis that that is their job, but that doesn't mean that this don't apply to you. Because one way or another, you are ministers. Right? Every member are ministers. What we are talking here is about the vocational ministry, but in truth, every one of us has received spiritual gifts. That is a slightly different topic, but let me take a slight rabbit trail. <laughs> Dito na, every member is a minister, and every, mem every one of you, God has given a gift by which you would serve the church to be able to accomplish all of these things that we have mentioned. Now, not only that uh, the unit of the faith would be accomplished in your ministry, that you be your goal in the ministry and unity in the knowledge of the Son of God, but your goal for the members is that they would, um, they would reach the um, mature manhood, uh, unto the perfect man or mature manhood. When the word perfect here has something to do with uh, mature manhood slash womanhood, that you would grow into maturity. Now, when you were, when you were a one year old, um, I would realize, I would imagine that you are being fed already with some semi-solid food, right? Siguro. And what would the somebody who would feed you do, just for you to open your mind? Mam, 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 mam. Okay, oh, itong airplane, oh, bukas ang bibig, papasok ang airplane. Papakainin pa kayo. You know, mga childish antique, just to feed you. Now, as you grow up, you learn to feed yourself. Or do other things that would be expected of a, growing, of a child who is growing up. But from time to time, you would now be told, be told by your parents, okay? Sinong pwede kong gamitin? Okay, brother, ano, nang bata ka, siguro, I could just imagine, brother, you, Ben, your mother would say, Tita Yoli would say, Brother Rio, uh, Rio Ben, uh, brush your teeth. Pinaparimahin ka hanggang anong, ano ba yan? Hanggang grade 6 ka na ba? <laughs> yung iba, hindi natututo. Kahit ano, kahit professional na. Rinirimahin pa rin ng kanilang nanay na magsipilyo na. The goal, your goal is this, that even as you grow up, you would come to the point that you would be able to decide to obey these rules even without anybody instructing you to do so. Even with, without the pastor, you would be able to do what is right in the, in, the, in the presence of all the people as you obey God. Can you just imagine, ano, halimbawa, lolo ka na, tapos i-remind ka pa ng iyong tatay na mag-brush ka pa ng iyong teeth. No. But sad to say, there are many pastors who just train their members to obey without them, teach, without teaching them to mature on their own. It's like this, and it's very sad. There was this pastor who bragged even about this. He said, you know what? Sabi niya, my members are so mature that they would not make any decision without consulting me. Even the buying of a car, buying of a refrigerator, you have to ask me for, I know, for guidance. No, you are not telling them how to mature. You are just treating them like children. And that's not your goal. Mature manhood. Yan ang goal ninyo. 
That's why here, we do not keep tabs on you. Dito sa church, nakikita mo naman kung paano magpapalakad si Pastor Boyd. Hindi niya kayo tatabs. He would not be keeping tabs on every one of us because he believes that the Holy Spirit is now leading you individually. And he is trust that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit are, are, that will be the one to guide you and you would obey the Holy Spirit in His guidance in your, through the Word in your life. So, wala po ditong pulis-pulisan para sa inyong mga ginagawa na mag spy kami sa inyo because hindi po yung tama because it, we believe that the Holy, we as Baptists believe in individual soul capacity that each believer being led by the Holy Spirit, being by, guided by the Word would be able to decide for himself what he would do and what um, in, as he faced with different uh, situations and choices in life. So that's what you should aim at, that you would aim for people to grow on their own as they are being led by God and guided by the Word of God. And also, your goal is this, conformity to the knowledge, to the image of Christ. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. Another term for this is sanctification or bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, or image building of the image of Christ in our life. This is going to take a lifetime, by the way. But first, here's what you are going to do. You have to de demonstrate holiness in your life personally. Because only a holy and clean vessel can guide us effectively in, um, in the work of the ministry. That is the ministry that we are going, that God is calling us to do. It's going to take a hard challenge. So this is not for us just to build a name for ourselves. This is on obedience, but we, are, we have to realize this, that we depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do the job. We are not doing it on our own. A while ago, I, um, I have not given you the definition of the ministry. It's this. Ministry is the calling given by the risen Lord to individual persons um, to the church in order that they might save him. And this is to be done in the power of the Holy Spirit that we as a church, that you as a church, that we as a church, we may promote spiritual unity, uh, spiritual maturity, and conformity to the image of Christ as they, create, as they carry out the mission of Christ into the world. Yan po ang ating, ano, ang ating trabaho. And by the way, walang may offer ang mundo na katulad nito. Kaya po, let us be faithful in the ministry. Let us be faithful to minister to others. At sa mga anand dito na nag-consider ng ganong uh, pursuit, you want to be trained in the ministry, this is what we can offer to you. We will be offering you how to handle the Word of God so that you will be able to uh, serve others. But the rewards the Lord will be the one to, uh, to give in His time and in His way. So, if the Lord is calling you to full-time ministry, why not enroll this coming enrollment? Kaya, uh, and also, if, you, if the Lord is not calling you, why not consider supporting Asia Baptist Bible College, praying for our ministers, and just like what other Irvin has encouraged you a while ago, that support every activity in our church. Kagaya ng graduation. I am happy for those who have attended. Your presence in that is an encouragement to them. And some of these will be coming here as, as missionaries or some form of the ministry. Please support them. And I'm happy for some of you that are giving money to those people who are ministers. Even though it's, we are, uh, even though it's not required, but you do it out of the out of the generosity from your heart. One, so uh, that would be my challenge for tonight. And shall we all sign up as we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you and we ask you, Lord, that help us to have a full view of the ministry, uh, a correct aspect view of the ministry, so that we would be able to serve you faithfully, depending on your. Uh, depending on your power and doing what you uh, had told us to do. Help us, O oh Lord, that 
for those people whom you are calling into full-time ministry that they would come and surrender. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good evening and uh, you're dismissed. You have any announcement? Okay. Okay, thank you, Brother Dennis, for that message. So after feed, feeding us with the word for our spiritual life, it's now time for us to be fed with our actual food. Okay, so after a song, we'll be dismissed, and we would like to invite everyone to please stay and come uh, down at the Tagalog uh, Auditorium, and we'll have a fellowship to celebrate the celebration of the graduates and also for a welcome party for our dear pastor. Brother Irvin? Okay, so we, let's go down and uh, we'll be having our fellowship downstairs. Thank you.